It is great to welcome everyone. My name is Annabelle Rogers um, and yeah, it's fantastic to welcome you all to our uh, webinar on using technology to drive herd performance. So um, we're very excited to be partnering with uh, Stabilizer Cattle Company, a very forward thinking and, and uh, proactive brand uh, and breed who are um, yeah, definitely at the, at the forefront of using data to, to drive um, their breed forward and, and really make it um, a fantastic animal for both breeding and, and commercial use. So um, I'm sure there's a lot of you on the webinar tonight running stabilizer cattle um, and we are excited to be offering um, a special promotion as well. Those using stabilizer cattle and running them um, being able to take advantage of that and using AgriWeb um, to record a lot of that data and, and really um, yeah, maximize those animals performance. Uh, we have Ed Hopkins joining us tonight. He is from Trey Barriard Farm in Breckenshire. Um, it's fantastic to have him, who is an early adopter of AgriWeb. Um, he's been using it for quite a while now, and it will be great to hear his experiences, um, as well as how he has made the switch and started um, incorporating stabilizers into his, uh, into his herd. And then of course we have Josh Brock as well. So he's um, our product expert at AgriWeb and, and we'll be running through a bit of a, a demo. Um, so while we are waiting, I'm going to actually stop sharing my screen and, and share a bit of a poll um, so that it will be great to sort of just get an understanding of what uh, people are, are running, whether they have stabilizer cattle at the moment on farm or, or whether it's that they're interested in, in learning more. Um, and also those of you who might be using AgriWeb or are here to, to learn more about it, it would be great to, um, to understand that. So I'll just give some a few moments there to, um, to let people answer that. Hopefully you can all see it on your screens now. And while that is running, I will also uh, just quickly run through the agenda. So um, we will first of all jump into, into Seth, who will share uh, a bit of an overview on the Stabilizer Cattle Company. Um, and then followed by, uh, we'll do an overview of AgriWeb um, and Josh will give a, a brief demo of how that works all in action. Um, and then we will hear from Ed, who will share um, how he's using Stabilizer and AgriWeb um, on his farm. And then we'll follow up with a, a Q&A. So that will be uh, all the questions answered at the end for the last um, quarter of an hour or so to wrap up by 7 p.m. Fantastic. So it looks like 90% of you have voted. I will just allow a few more moments there and then we'll kick right into, into Seth if that's okay. So I'll end the poll there now. We've got, I'll share those results. Hopefully you can all see that. So we've got a nice uh, varied mix. So plenty of you are here to learn more um, about both Stabilizer and Agria, which is great. And what we're, what we're here to talk about as well. So um, with that, I'll stop sharing. And Seth, I'd love to hand the reins over to you. Welcome and, and thanks for joining us tonight. And um, yeah, I'll let you take the reins. Wonderful. Well, look, first up, thank you uh, very much for, for uh, having us on this evening. Also, thank you to everybody that's come and joined us. I appreciate that uh, it's been a rather beautiful day outside and that there's probably lots of jobs that uh, everybody could be getting on with. So uh, the fact that you've, you've given up an hour to come and listen to us this evening is, is brilliant. So, uh, look, my name is Seth Waring. I'm the business manager at Stabilizer Cattle Company. What I want to do is just quickly um, run through uh, a few things that um, I want to talk about about beef production. Uh, which screen can you see, Annabelle? Yep, we're all good on your front screen. Yep, perfect. Uh, so, just going to quickly bounce through what a stabilizer animal is, what separates us from everybody else um and talk some somewhere behind the principles behind it then i want to talk a little bit about why are we working with agriweb um and and the benefits that, that everybody can achieve by uh looking at stabilizer and agriweb together so uh first up let's let's kick things off with um you know a suckler cow what is it what does she need to do uh this is what we're all about for me 
and and for, for most suckler farmers what we need is a cow to calve on a second birthday she uh, she needs to come down with calf down without any problems or without any challenges she needs to be able to rear that calf all the way through uh, to point of weaning and then she needs to do the same again for the next uh, eight to nine years till she's about 10 and then she can be moved out the herd and ideally what we want to do is is breed a whole herd of, of ghost cows those are the cows that we never notice because there's never a problem with them these are the cows that never have bad feet they're the cows that never got a bad temperament they're the ones that calve themselves uh, in the middle of the night and when you're down the calf is up and suckling uh, and then they're the animals that just keep performing and performing and performing these are the animals that you never have to do anything with and and that for me is really what a suckler cow should be um it all starts off uh, around this birth and with all of the stuff that we're talking about the big key thing that i'd like you to think about as you're going through is how do we know that we're doing this how do we know that we're achieving what we're doing and, and the answer is we're doing it through data. So all of the things that we're going to talk about now and all of the figures and all the numbers that we talk about is all because this gets recorded on 12,000 pedigree animals up and down the country. Uh, we record everything, the good, the bad and the ugly. So, you know, we know that this happens. But the first one, the first thing that we need to do is make sure that we have a, a calf hitting the ground. So we need to make sure that we've got a low birth weight so that that, that calf uh, can be calved without any problems and then once that calf is out she's up and sucking if we ha have big calves or we have to go and help them that can then run into problems for the next uh, cycle so we don't perhaps get them in calf quite as quickly uh, or it can end up with with problems around the calf or the cow itself as i said earlier the first thing that she has to do is to carve and that, that has to be at two years old you know to, to have these cows where we don't carve until three, it means we've got to keep them that extra year. Now, when we do carve at two, that cow is not, she's not fully grown at that point. So we do have to do some looking after in that first season, but when she's a heifer to get a carving down at two can be achievable if we've got the right genetics in there and that ability for the, for the, for the heifer to grow, to put on the frame, to get to that mature weight as quickly as possible uh, without going too far at all and that mature weight is going to be a big thing you know the it's, it's fairly easy to say that the bigger the cow the more food it needs to eat the more uh grub we need to give it whether that's out at grass up a hill or whether it's uh inside during the winter we've got to feed it forage or any concentrates if we can have a a, a, a smaller cow she's going to have less maintenance requirements uh it also allows you to run a lot more on the same area so if you've got a set ground you can run more cows that are 650 kilos than you could if the cow was 800 kilos. And that 650 is what we're trying to target for our mature cow size, but we need her to get there quickly. So this is where that early puberty uh, and that, that carving at two comes into it. She needs to have good fertility. Now she needs to have it and the bull they're using needs to have good fertility because you know she needs to carve every year on a birthday. So from, from one calf to the next calf, we've got a, a three month window in that. She needs to make sure that she's producing enough milk to, to grow the calf, but also that she can get herself cycling again. So when the bulls go in, they come around, they get back in calf, they have their next calf on their birthday. All uh, key important bits. Uh, the other thing that uh, we like to do is to make sure that these are low maintenance cows. We don't have to feed them a lot. We don't have to do a lot of with them. You know, they need to be forage efficient. This picture here, as you can see, these are these are in Snowdonia up at a thousand feet. Um, not everybody's got a thousand feet, but if they can survive there, they can survive pretty much anywhere. They need to be able to uh, feed and, and survive outside without a lot of inputs and without a lot of um, hard feed going to them. So whether we're, we're, we're wintering them outside on the side of the hill or whether we're feeding them inside we don't want to feed them a lot we want that cow just to be uh to the, her maintenance to be small so that we can focus on uh, growing those young stock rather than having to feed a lot to the cow and we also need to make sure that they can they can do it outside so without the carving problems or without that challenges that cow can carve outside again it makes life easier so if you if you if we're just purely talking about the cow point of view all of those key uh traits and measurements that we've just talked about are going to be key now 
we can do all of that. We know that the cows can do, can calve at two, have a calf every year, get back in calf the following year. They can do it at the side of the hill and they can do it at very low cost. Now, that's all very well and good from a cow point of view, but that's only half the equation in a circular enterprise. You know, the, 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 the cow is half the equation. The offspring is the other half of the equation. And unless we're getting decent output from those animals, unless they can grow well and hit the market specification, it doesn't matter how efficient we've got our cow, if we can't get a decent return at the other end, it defeats the point of what we're doing. So this is where the data really starts coming into it. You know, because a lot of people, they challenge and they say, well, if you're bringing down cow size and you're looking for a smaller cow, surely you're going to end up with a smaller animal uh, when it comes to slaughter and, and fat sales. And, you know, traditionally, that's always been the that's been where we've gone. So we've, we've um, the UK suckler farmer has always wanted a bigger animal at slaughter. So they've, they've, they've not only just focused on the terminal side, but they focused on getting that bigger cow. So if we have a bigger cow, we have a bigger calf. And, and that's perhaps where we've run into a few problems. But with data and genetics, what it's allowed us to do is to select animals and select the cows that have a moderate size. But then we can select the bulls to use that make sure that those offspring get up to that size really quickly. And having you know high growth and inspect carcasses is the other half of it. So whether you're selling as stores in the back end or whether you're selling as yearlings uh, or whether you're taking them all the way through to fat, having that animal that can perform is going to be a key part to it. And uh, what we look at when we do that is is that for for steers and uh, for steers, we want those to be at slaughter weight, which is about 360 kilos uh, on an R4L. They can do that in 16 to 18 months. The other end of it, uh, if we're looking at bulls, and I know Ed's got some bulls and he'll be uh, watching this, uh, these figures closely and hopefully uh, be performing just as well. The bulls do the same, the same thing. So it's, it's carcass weight of 360 kilos. The grading is slightly better, but they do it at 13 months old. And, and that just means that we can get those offspring away as soon as and efficient as possible. And it allows us, it allows the farm to, to run more stock with less input hopefully a better return at the other end. Now, as I said earlier, what, what's allowed us to do that in the last 20 years since the stabilizer was um, uh, first born in the UK is data. It's data collection, it's data analysis, and it's selecting the right animals from the whole gene pool that allows us to do this. And we've, we've made great strides in coming, for, in coming forward and the, the um, overall growth of the breed. Now, these are, some, these are some figures here that, that show what an average suckler farmer does and what is achievable with stabilizer genetics. Now, you can see there that AHDB column, that is the top third of AHDB um, farmers. That is where the UK suckler industry is. Uh, and I'm not going to go through all of these, but, you know, this all of this data is available. We're quite happy to share it afterwards as well. But uh, you can see really what these numbers uh, down the down the middle here are showing. This is where the uh, um, this is where the UK average farmer is, and this is what can be achieved with using the right genetics. So it means that we can have more live calves being born. We can have less losses from birth through to sale. We can have more animals at the point of sale, and we can have a lot. It make it a lot easier on everybody that's going forward and doing this. Um, and when you put that into, into what does that mean as a return, there's lots of different ways of looking at it. Um, but if we put it into pounds and pence, it can be worth up to 350 quid per cow place. If you're moving from, uh, you know, a, a three year first calf in and, and, and a 90% getting in calf every year, get those animals, get those figures up, it can be worth 350 quid per cow place. Now, another way of looking at it, and this is something that, that we that seems to be really focused on at the moment, is carbon. And what we've done, I'm not going to go through to the details, but this is just a, another way of doing it. We did a whole load of work on carbon measurement. And if you put all of those efficiencies in place, not only do you end up making more money, you have a more efficient farm and a more efficient herd. You can massively reduce the carbon that's outputted as well. So this this. These, uh, this figure here is a reduction of about 40% from, from the average farm moving over to a, a stabilizer system. And that's, you know, depending on however you want to look at it, 
what this means is that we've got the right cattle in place, we've got the right genetics in place, we've got the right breeding structure in place to allow us to do this, but it's all been achieved through data. Now, what, what we've, we've done is, is we've, we've, partnership, we've partnered with AgriWeb because we see AgriWeb, just like ourselves, being a leader in what they're doing. Uh, they've got the vision and the foresight to make a system that is easy to record this data and it's easy to then analyze the data because it's all very well and good capturing it. But if you can't analyze it and you can't make decisions about what's happening on your farm, there's no point capturing it in the first place. So a lot of the metrics that we've looked at and, and we've got a whole heap of metrics, it all comes back to, to capturing that data and then using those metrics to go forward. And what AgriWeb can do is make it easier for everybody to help you as farmers make a better breeding decisions um, and better farm decisions going forward. Now, we're really excited with, about this partnership. You know, we've, we've put a lot of time and effort uh, in researching everything else that's out there. Uh, but what we want to make sure that, that farmers can have the right tools to have the most efficient system, that's in terms of genetics and management and practices, but also that they've got the tools then to make further decisions to help improve uh, the whole farm enterprise going forward. Now, it's only been a very short, quick, brief overview of what the stabilizers are there. If anyone's got any other questions, then please stick them in the chat and we can go through them at the end. Or if anybody wants to get in touch with me, uh, then please do so. But uh, look, thank you very much for your time this evening. Uh, and I look forward to the questions later on. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Seth. And yeah, just to um, reiterate that it's, uh, you know, our brands are very much uh, aligned in terms of being, you know, data driven and, and trying to achieve the same thing, um, you know, for the betterment of the producer and, and the cattle. So um, yeah, really hope that um, people can, you know, get excited about that as much as we are um, to really drive the herd forward. Um, with that, I will share my screen and give a bit of an overview about AgriWeb and, and yeah, just I guess to reiterate how we are um, partnering as well. So hopefully you can all see the slides on the screen there um, and to give you a bit of a backstory of AgriWeb. Um, so it began in 2014 in Australia, um, and it was really built off um, our two, we've got two co-founders who have uh, farming backgrounds, they're fifth generation farmers. Um, and the issue came about that they had big decisions to make on, on their family farms around management practices and, and various things, but they didn't have the information there to actually make those decisions other than, um, you know, it was very much a, a finger in the wind and, and a attitude around it's what we've always done. And so for our co founder on the far right, as you can see on the screen there, um, Justin Webb, that didn't really fly. And so it was, it was you know, he was wanting to find that information and, and have data driven decisions, uh, which made him go looking for, for software that was out there for farmers. And he, he came across software that all looks like this. It's, it's clunky, it's hard to use, uh, it's not intuitive and, and to, you know, get that information recorded, it requires going in a notebook beforehand, um, before being entered in at, at the end of the day. So that's really the crux of AgriWeb. It's, it's taking that notebook and digitizing it. So putting it on the phone, which you've got in your pocket, um, you've taking anywhere, everywhere you go anyway, um, and making it simple, easy to use, and uh, just having it all in the one spot. You know, if you're out in the field, that's, that information is, you know, is there and, and front of mind so that you don't have to worry about it at later. So AgriWeb um, has been in the UK for the last 18 months and, and has been um, fully localised. We are always evolving the product, um, but it is, it is built for UK farmers uh, as well. And so where it, is, it comes different to, to other software platforms out there is it is that complete farm management platform and, and really putting it all together um, in, the, in the one spot. And you'll hear from Ed who has lots of, lots of various um, yeah, 
enterprises on his farm, but being able to manage them all uh, in the one app is uh, is certainly what we're hoping to achieve and, and make that simpler for, for all of our farmers. So um, yeah, whether it's it's just cattle or whether you've got you know your flock and, and field information there that you're wanting to record medicine uh, records. And then of course it, it needs to be uh, multi-user for everybody in the family or, or people across um, the farm to, to have access to it. And then it's also really been built with, with farmers at the forefront of feedback and development to, to drive it um, to where it needs to be. Um, and then, you know, when you're on farm, it's got to work with, with what you've got on there uh, on farm with you. So it's the, the stick readers and the, the wayheads, as I'm sure a lot of you um, perhaps use already, you know, it's, it's connecting that in via Bluetooth so that it, it all works seamlessly. Um, and that information then attaches right to that um, animal record so that you can track that performance um, and really see how that is going um, the whole for its whole lifetime and, and the whole way along. And then what you can then pull out with of that information is these insights. So it's uh, being able to you know, identify the various uh, overperformers or underperformers and, and making those um, you know, decisions of when to sell um, so that you can maximize your, um, your profits and, and your business. Uh, so, when it comes to together and and when we are talking um, about our collaboration with with stabilizer um, you know our industry works best when we do collaborate and all work together so that is why you know there is so much information that um, farmers are having to collect for compliance and and for records of performance and everything um, but it's when you get that information out the other side to to make those um, you know important and, and valuable decisions for your business that it is able to actually move the needle. And so that is why we've built this special tool. Um, it's called the AgriWeb Advisor Portal to do just that. It's that communication channel um, to be able to, to get that information out the other side, um, you know, to the people who are able to, to use it to, um, for your benefit and actually make those decisions. Um, so as Seth mentioned, it's, you know, it's those commercial breeding decisions and, and being able to, to have that information as a, as a whole across the, the board of, of stabilizer, um, yeah, stabilizer performance information and, and um, genetics and everything. So by having access to, to this advisor um, portal, stabilizer are going to be able to, to um, yeah, really, really move the needle with commercial cattle of, that are stabilizer breed. Um, it's going to be, you know, there to, to make, take advantage of, by no means compulsory. Um, and, you know, it's, it's just going to be a, there to, um, yeah, really help drive the stabilizer breed forward. Um, so on that, I will also mention that it is the farmer will always own the information and it is, um, you know, it is an opt in process, no information will be shared um, without your consent. Um, but that's, but that's how we are, you know, really communicate, like increasing the communication and, um, and yeah, making that information more valuable. Uh, so there is there is that side to our collaboration. And then there is, of course, um, being able to, to really make allow you to have a package that you can take advantage of and, and get the most benefit um, out of by running your stabilizers so that comes with having a, um, a promotion of signing up for AgriWeb and uh, and receiving 20% um, off our annual plans so I am going to hand over to Josh now who will take you through um, a demo of AgriWeb and explain that a little bit further um, so thank you very much Josh if you are all ready I'm ready. Thank you very much, Annabelle. And that was really good, um, Seth. And it's teed me up perfectly for what we're going to go through tonight, just quickly. Um, I think we've got 12 minutes. So I think that's a perfect amount of time to see all the important stuff that I would like to show you. So what I'm going to do um, is I'm just going to quickly share my screen and then give you a bit more spiel, and then we'll be into it. So what we're going to look at tonight, um, <clears throat> we're going to go through five things, um, which is going to be, we're going to look at the map first, but then we're going to go birth, death, um, treatments, weights, um, and PD and um, pregnancy um, diagnosing. The agenda is that we're going to really, really try and show you how quick and easy it is to collect this data um, through your phone, through our app, and whether that's Android or iPhone, 
um, how easy it is to collect that data whilst you're on the fly, um, out there in the out there in the field, out there in the you know in the sheds and doing doing whatever. Um, so we're going to go through those five things, and then we'll go through in the second part of the demo. We'll go into the web portal and we'll look at all the reports and the weight analysis that we can um, sort of pull up. And that is, you know, first and foremost, it's for sort of statutory requirements, um, all the sort of vet and meds and stuff like that we can pull out because we're connected with BCMS as well. So you can do movements, deaths, births, everything like that through us. But again, also coming down to that sort of um, performance analysis as well and all that sort of um, data collection. And like Animal sort of did say, um, we're full farm management. So animal performance, but also, um, yeah, government sort of uh, requirements for inspections and things like that. So I'll stop talking and I'll show you. And what I'll do is I will actually turn off my camera so you're not looking at the top of my head um, and we can go from there. So this is my phone. This is my um, my iPhone, works on Android as well. What we can see, first of all, is we're just looking at a map right now. And this map is a farm that I was working on down in West Sussex and I've sort of color coded all my fields. and. What I can do is if I zoom in, I can actually see um, what individual animals are um, on my map. Um, if I click on this field here, I can see sort of a bit of an overview of the hay paddock. Um, if I go to my individuals, I can see I've got four of my stable ca stabilizer cattle in here. And if we wanted to say do a treatment for these animals, we can just select and order them. We can go animal record and we can go treatment. This then pulls me through to my live inventory of all my different animals in here. I uh, saw all of my different medicines that are in my medicine cupboard. And so say we could just pour, click on this um, cattle pour on. We've still got those four, those four animals that are in that field that we're treating. We can put in that dosage that we're giving them per head. Keep scrolling down, select from the correct inventory. Um, so again, to give you really accurate medicine records as well that are being created for you automatically just by you clicking these buttons. Put that reason for treatment in there. And as soon as you've done that, and as soon as you hit save, that's in those animals treated, you can now create a medicine record um, and it'll all be down in their history. Now, you don't have to do treatments through um, the map there. I just wanted to give you an example of sort of seeing where your individual animals are on the farm at any time. And there's a lot more stuff that we could go through, but we're just going to go through those five um, things tonight. We've got paddocks, um, so you can do your fertilizer applications and all that sort of stuff for the farm. But we're going to go through to the individual animal management side of Agarib now. So I'm going to click on my livestock tab in the bottom, and this then pulls me through to all of my individual animals on the farm. And we've already gone through um, how you can do a treatment. Um, so what we're going to do now is um, birth. And this obviously is super duper important, especially this time of year. Um, I've got my nice stabilizer cattle right at the top there. And if I click on her, this is now this individual animal's card where you can sort of scroll through and you can see her sort of management tags and EID numbers. Um, her current sort of status is pregnant and she's fertile. And if we keep scrolling down, we can see her current weight um, and carry on. She's had a pretty steep weight incline recently. Um, she's doing quite well. Um, you could also see the parentage down the bottom there as well. But if we click on history, you can see all the different records that have been created for this individual animal. I won't read them all out because I'm a bit of a, I do tend to read exactly what I'm seeing at, but you can see exactly everything that's on screen. So she's had a um, preg scan recently in AI um, and everything else that's been created for her. So what we're looking at right now is just creating um, a record for one animal at a time. So this would be ideal for say some antibiotic, more importantly birthing and um, hopefully not, but maybe um, sort of a death record as well. So we just go add record. These are all the records that I can create on an individual animal basis and that I can create for this animal right now. So like I did say, um, we're gonna to go to birth right now. So if we click on birth, and this is really that foundation of all that sort of, um, what you're gonna start building off from, you know, the performance of your animals and being able to see how you're going on farm. And what we'll do is we just go to this cog in the top right hand corner and we go to advanced. And it just gives us a few more options of what we can record um, at carbon time. So postal location CPH, as soon as you put that in there, because we're connected up with BCMS um, and sort of Scott Moves as well and everything like that, um, you can get your passports and your, everything like that directly back through the post um, or through Agarib. So you can put that in there. What you can also do is you can select your animal, your sire, sorry. Um, we can just say he's natural, but also if you're doing AI, um, you can do all that through, through Agarib as well. Um, so we're just going to select an animal um, naturally or sire naturally, sorry. 
But what I can say is that right now I'm just selecting it manually, but if you're creating um, the full sort of all year round um, record, so what ball has been joined to what cows or what AI straw you've um, AI'd this cow with, that will intuitively um, filter down into these records. So we've selected our sire. And now because we clicked on that cog in the top right hand corner at the start, we've now got these additional options of what we can start recording. So carving difficulty, assistance method, our presentation aggressiveness. And this is all super important stuff um, for you guys as farmers, but also for, for stabilizer as well. And we can keep scrolling down. We're just gonna say she's had one, one cow. She's a nice heifer calf. She wasn't stillborn. You know, if you were um, rubber ringing any balls, you can do that as well. That cut, that cutter, calf size, calf figure. And then you can click to add weight and just type in the weight. Now we can go add tag. And whether you're just going straight from um, BCMS tags or you've got an EID wand and you're putting EID tags in all your calves, um, you've got that option here of putting it straight in here straight away um, and it's done for you. So as soon as if I, if I did enter that in and hit save, um, what it will do is it will create that calf. And all you got to do to send that off to, to BCMS is come to your web portal. And we'll look at that in a bit. Um, and then you can send that straight straight off to, to BCMS and get your parcel back in the post. So that's our birth. We've done our treatment. We can look quickly at death. Um, so we can go add record. Still on the same cow. We're not going to kill her, but I'll just show you how to do it. Go death. And really important, you know, this is for BCMS, but also for your records. You're starting to sort of see those trends year on year of what might be happening, how you can change management, what you can do about sort of, you know, um, hopefully not, not happening, not, not letting this happen again. So cause of death, um, all these different reasons here. And you can put any additional details in there yourself. And like I said, as soon as you hit save, you can then send that off to BCMS directly through AgriRev as well. Now, what we've looked at here, we've just gone through our individual animals list and we're just creating a record for one animal at a time. But obviously, you know, you're working through animals. If they're, you've got a race full of animals and you're doing a whole different um, array of sort of different things, we can do that in AgriRev as well. So we can go to start life session in the top left hand corner. We can go to cattle. And these are all the records we can create for, you know, a big group of animals, whether it's a race full of animals or whatever you're doing. We'll look at weight. This is where you could also do your pregnancy scanning um, and a whole array of other, other things, artificial insemination as well. But as an example, what we're looking at right now is weighing. And this is where you can connect that hardware. So if you did have that EID um, weigh head, you can use that as well as that EID one to, to identify the animals. However, we can still collect all these weights without any of that technology as well. Draft um, option. So that's where, as we looked at at the start, we've got the map um, and you can see where all your different individual animals are on the map. Um, so you could draft a location. So say you are drafting your pregnant um, cows off one way and your, your sort of empties another way or um, on certain weights or something like that. You can draft those locations. We can also add animals into management groups so you can come and find them um, later on and see how that specific group of animals are performing on farm. We're not going to set any of that up. We're just going to start session for now. Because I haven't got a cow here on EID wand or anything like that, we're just going to select an animal manually. Got my stabilizer at the top. Select her. Now what we can do, if we just got conventional scales, we can just click on edit and we can just type in how much she's weighed. And you can see her average daily weight gain, her overall daily weight gain. And if you wanted to, you could actually go through to her full profile and just click, you know, find out a bit more about her. As soon as you hit save and next, you can keep working through that race of animals and just collect that, animal, that, that full list of animals um, records super quickly, super easily. Um, and that's that. And now I'm very close to running out of time. So what we're going to do is if there are questions, we've got heaps of time at the end. Um, I feel like we've gone through everything I wanted to go through. Uh, as we did see, there's a hell of a lot more to look through on the app. Um, and, you know, we yeah, we can go through that at, at a later time. But what I'm going to do is just quickly shuffle onto um, my web portal and we can sort of see where all um, the reports get pulled into. So, no, that's the wrong screen. Do apologize. Where is it? Here we go, right, we're in. So my web portal is on my laptop. I've got my mouse in my hand, make it super easy to navigate through all your reports and everything like that. First thing we're gonna look at is this is a load of cattle data that I've got hold of. Um, and so you can see all of these different weight charts. And what we can actually do is go expand on one of them. This is always a good one to look at. And all these are different lines are different animals. We could then start grouping by say a sire. 
and we can see all the different sizes that are in here. And what we could do is, you know, start seeing how different ones are performing. We can actually just start clicking on them and seeing how they're going. Um, so we've got this one here, for instance. And what we can actually do is, we've now um, sort of pulled out that, that side we want to look at specifically, and we can go export selection. And what this does is it pulls out all those animals that are in that um, selection, and they're all down here. And then you can come along and see who their mums and dads are. You can click through to each individual animal and see how they're performing um, and go from there. What is also really good, we're just going to go none for now, but we've got this filter system. And what this filter system allows you to do is put as many of these filters on your individual animal list as you want to find a specific animal, group of animals, or anything like that. So it's just a filter um, so you can find a specific animal or a specific group of animals at any time. We won't scroll, scroll through all of them, but they're all there. Finally, what we're going to is AgriWeb. This is the farm that we were demoing um, at the start. You can see on the stabilizer cattle there. If I go into my reports, we've already looked at my sort of weight insights and everything like that. But what we can also do um, is look at all these different reports here and we go to my individuals. So all your different reports that you're creating get pulled into here. So whether that's your pregnancy scanning, um, death records throughout the year, treatment records all in one place. Um, and you can always break it down per individual animal or per batch number or whatever. Um, so you can find out exactly what's happening. And this is really important for those inspections. But what I think is really cool, um, we've got these two um, production reports. So lifetime animal performance. And I'm a bit of a bugger for reading out every single column, and I'm not going to do that this time. But what this report does is it pulls out how each individual animal has performed when they've gone to the avatar. Um, so it breaks it down, like I said, per animal. Um, we're not going to worry about purchase date or purchase weight or anything like that. But if we keep scrolling along, you can see sale price, sale weight, last weight on farm, how long sort of days to slaughter, age at slaughter. But then through our sale records, we can pull in um, sort of all your kill um, sheet data. So how they performed, that kill out percentage, that confirmation grade, everything like that. And because you can do all your inputs through AgriRib as well, your medicines, any feeds you might have given, um, if, you're, if you're managing your cattle that way, it pulls all that out and works it out. So what you've been paid for it and what you've put into that cattle. And like I said, it's as soon as you're putting this information into AgriRib, it's pulling out these um, reports for you automatically. Last stop, super important for inspections, herd register. You can see exactly what's happened on your farm in a specified um, time. It gets pulled out into here. Um, so you can see like your inventory at any given time on farm, um, all your births that have happened in one year. And you can just print this off and give it to the inspector whenever they turn up on farm. So I'm a minute over time. Um, we've got time for questions at the end. So I hope everyone's got some. And I guess what I'll finish on there is we've absolutely flown through that. But hopefully what you can see is it really does hit the box for easy record collection, whether that's on an individual um, level um, that we've looked at this evening. But we can also do a lot of other stuff in AgriRib as well. So really easy to collect this data. And once it's in here, it's getting pulled into these automatic um, reports for you. I think I'm done, Annabelle. Fantastic. Thank you, Josh. And um, yeah, no, that's a good. What was that? Sorry. I've got to go through pricing now, haven't I? That's my next bit. Uh, we can, shall we leave pricing till the, um, when we go through it with, after, after Ed, we'll leave the pricing to the questions. So um, yeah, just to keep us all moving along, we'd love to, to welcome Ed, um, who will, yeah, share his, his, um, what's happening on Trebariad Farm and um, how he's been using AgriWeb and, and started running stabilizer cattle. So um, I'll hand it over to you, Ed. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I've never done anything like this before, so um, hopefully it won't be too bad. I'll try and um, I've got a few pictures to go along with it. Is that working? No. Yeah. Okay. Um, Okay. Um, hello, my name is Ed Hopkins. I, um, my father and I farm in South Powys, New Hay on Wye. We have roughly half the farm in arable cropping and, and the other half in grass. We take the rotation around the farm and only a few fields will be permanent arable or permanent grassland. We grow a wide range of crops, winter wheat, barley, spring, or, spring barley, oilseed rape, maize and fodder beet. Um, we've been on a min-till system for a few years, but have this year bought a direct drill, hoping 
that after a three or four year grass day, we can take advantage of good soil structure. Um, so that's going to be an interesting time for us now. On the livestock side, we have a commercial flock of clean ewes. We run them as easy care as possible, lambing them outside in April. We keep an elite group within our flock. These are bred to a clean ram. Um, any that need lambing assistance, don't milk well, a poor mothers, a bad feet, anything that doesn't fit our maternal breeding drops out of that elite group. Um, this way we can keep our placements as easy care, you know, breeding is right for them. Any that fall out of that elite group, the, the rest of the flock go to a Charolais ram to produce fat lambs. Um, we have to do this because of our arable workload in the spring. We cannot be wasting time with our, with our sheep. Um, we sell most of our lambs through Talgarth Market, with some going on the dead to Dunbeer and Keepak. I also have a flock of pedigree Charolais ewes. I lamb these inside. Um, I sell the rams as yearlings and try to produce proper farmer's tubs, concentrating again on, on functional, functional breeding characteristics. Um, good birth coats, lamb vigor, good feet, uh, as well as your usual terminal sire um, characteristics. In 2013, we had the opportunity to expand and we started a dairy beef system here. We rear dairy calves and take them through to finish. We steer most of the bull calves and use homegrown feed to finish them at about 16 months. At the same time, we started a spring calve in Suckler Hood. We bought 10 Simmental heifers and used AI on them. And from there, we built up to about 50 Simmental cows and 10 heifers every year. Uh, the best half of our Simmental cows go back to a Simmental bull and we breed our own replacements. Again, anything with big teeth, bad teeth, uh, bad feet, we just don't keep them as replacements. Um, yeah, we keep the bull calves entire and finish them inside um, at 12 to 16 months. But we have found over the last few years, beef processors have been reducing their slaughter weights and they've wanted more fat cover. Um, we've been struggling to get the bulls finished properly before they go overweight. This, along with weighing our cows last autumn, and three of them being nearly a ton, led us to look at some alternatives. Um, both my father and I have always been aware of the stabilizer breed, but back in 2013 when we started our herd, we didn't think there were enough stabilizers in the country to start a herd. I think if we had, we'd have gone with them back then. I think not seeing them in store rings around the country was the reason for this, as most marketing of the breed is carried out in-house by the Stabilizer Cattle Company. Um, we've noticed the breed's presence on social media in the farming press over the last few years, and as we looked for a smaller framed cow that would carve easily and produce a bull we can get more finish on, they seemed a natural choice. I think where the Stabilizer beats some of the native breeds um, that may also fit these criteria, such as the Angus, is in the commercial focus of the breed. There's a lot of attention to figures and EBVs uh, and the breeds work on feed efficiency, I think is big potential in reducing feed costs and reducing our carbon footprint, which is very fashionable for the anti-farming press to spout about at the moment. Having said that, we aren't very far into our foray into stabilizers. We bought 10 heifers last spring. Um, we synchronized and they eyed them to Givendale Black Resolution. I forgot to go through my pictures here, sorry. Um, yeah, Givendale Black Resolution. We chose him on figures and looks. Um, they have been outwintered on maize stubble along with our Simmental heifer replacements. And they've held their condition very well, um, just on silage. Didn't always look pretty with them outside, but um, they have looked very content. And even with the serious amount of rain we had through January. They've just now been bought inside and are due to start calving any day. Um, we also used AI on some of our best Simmental cows. We picked five smaller framed cows that either produced twins or were born as a twin and AI'd them to stand the man. Uh, another good bull with good figures and we've seen a few of his pro progeny around and we were very impressed by them. Uh, in short, our sheep and sucklers have to be as easy care as possible. With the arable workload in the spring, we can't spend time with ewes and cows that have obvious faults. I think and I hope that the stabilizer, stabilizer breed will help us in this. We've been round and looked at several stabilizer herds and the cows that we've seen were all medium sized, good on their feet, with good udders. I don't want to tempt fate and start talking about Carvanese, but in a few weeks, I'm sure I'll have more to say about that. Um, 
Last autumn, we saw some stabilizer storables for sale. We bought 20. We wanted to skip ahead a year and see how their progeny would finish for us before we you know, just gain a year, really. Um, we, um, yeah, so comparing them to our, our own Simmental bulls, their daily live weight gain has been pretty much the same. You know, as individuals, the averages would all be the same. Um, and they're looking well with a better co covering of fat. Um, we'll start killing them in June. So it'll be interesting to see how weights and grades compare. Um, we started using AgriWeb when it was released. Um, I now use it almost every day. Developers keep on adding more and more features. I'm not the best on phones and technology, so I don't pretend to use it to its full potential. But day to day, I use it for, for medicine records. Every treatment we ad administer now gets put on AgriWeb. No more bits of paper and washing machines and, and missing records. Um, it's linked to BCMS. I regularly use that to find out cattle ages as they approach finish. Um, we do weigh our cattle. We find AgriWeb very useful logging weights and automatically working out daily live weight gain. Um, I can't say we weigh them as often as we should, but as we become more organized, I hope it's something we do do more. It is a great guide to performance. Um, this year, I'll be using AgriWeb to register births within the herd. Um, we use it for the sheep as well. Um, Dad used to keep all the sheep records on paper, and it was a system that only he could uh, only he could understand. Um, yeah, so the ability to allocate different sheep and different cattle to different groups and enterprises, um, record lambing, calving details, parentage, um, weight gains on a system that is actually easy enough for us to use. Um, and more than that, it's easy enough for us to bother to use. We, we have had other farm software packages and I just gave up on them. Um, for sheep, one advantage of AgriWeb, I would say you can have untagged lambs and treat them as a mob and still keep all records on them, treatments, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, we use the map feature to record where and when we plant our crops and which varieties we have sown. Um, muck spreading records, and we might start using us for our spray records as well. Um, yeah, so to sum that up, it, AgriWeb has a lot of good features, and unlike some of its competitors, they are actually easy enough for us to use. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak, and yeah, if anybody's got any questions, I'm more than happy to ask. It. Thank you. Brilliant, Ed. Well done. Thank you, Ed. Fantastic. Um, yeah, always fantastic to, to hear from the farm themselves. And, and I am sure there's a few questions coming through um, for you directly as you're, you know, you're the best person to ask um, who's got the first hand experience. So uh, we will move on to, to questions. Um, and Josh, I think the first one for you is, is um, if you want to take the reins with just sharing about the price of, of AgriWeb and, and how um, if you are running Stabilizer cattle or, or are on this um, Zoom tonight, how you can um, benefit from, from an offer. Definitely. Let me share my screen and I'll show you exactly what we're talking about. So we have, you know, we're really happy and we really want to help, you know, all farmers and we want to, we're really happy to be on board with Stabilizer. So sort of to push that, uh, let me just present this. Um, what we've come to sort of some sort of a agreement and an arrangement, uh, we're offering anyone that's got stabilizer cattle on their farm, 20% um, off these prices here. Um, and so there's two different packages that you can come on board with, the essentials and the commercial. And what we can say about the essentials is it's your basic um, animal records you can collect your weights, you can collect better meds, deaths, all your BCMS connections and everything like that. Unlimited users. Um, and also you have online um, chat support. But then if you were to jump up, so obviously the 20% off of that, then if you jump up to the commercial package, you get all of that um, sort of animal record collection and stuff like that, but you get the animal performance reports and you get the weight insights as well. Um, and that comes in this 250 pound bracket. But what you also get with that um, is online and phone support as well. So you can actually call someone up if you've ever got a drama and you'll get some, some help sort of straight away. Um, now, I hope that sort of made sense. The commercial just comes with more, what the weight insights like the graphs we looked at and those animal performance reports. So what you're sort of getting, making from each um, animal and everything like that. Um, so I hope that's explained it well enough. 20% um, off both of those, 
unlimited use across all um all of our all of our packages there and every single one of our packages also comes with additional training so if you feel like you're going to give it a go um you know you can come on board and you don't have to pay for the year you can pay monthly and give it a go per month um until you did want to come on board for a yearly um plan but what does come with all of our packages is that training as well so you can have an additional training session with one of our success managers um, and what that means, you can sit on a Zoom call um, with heaps of other, so you can see all the other users that are coming on board with us, as interactors as we, we as we can make it as well, because we're all about sort of, yeah, interaction. You can sort of ask your questions and see exactly what you want to see in these training sessions. So, um, yeah, I hope that's explained it. If there's any questions on that pricing, please um, reach out. We can go through it in the Q&A in a second um, and everything like that. But 20% off both of those as well for anyone with Stabilizer Cattle. Fantastic. And we do have a free trial that um, is there for everyone to take advantage of. Um, so you can get started with the free trial um, this evening, scanning the QR code um, will, and it will take you to that um, sign up page. Um, you know, it's there to, to really just dig in and see how you like it. Give it a go. Nothing to lose. You've got 14 days to, to try Agri for free. Um, and then the, the code there is to take advantage of that 20% off. Um, so anybody running stabilizer cattle, um, whether you've got one, whether you've got a hundred, um, it's all applied and, um, and yeah, just there to for you guys to take advantage of and, and benefit from. So, um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully you're keen to dig in. Um, so we do have some other questions, um, rolling in, um, there is one about exporting the data and, and um, yeah, being able to um, take that data elsewhere and, and use, um, Josh, do you want to explain that one a bit further? Sorry, um, Annabelle, what was that question? Um, just the ability to export your data and how that can okay. um, be sh shared. Absolutely. So what I'll actually do then is I'll just quickly share my screen on my AgriWeb because I guess we're going to have questions based around the product. Um, so everything is exportable, absolutely everything. And what you can see um, is if I go into my livestock and my individuals, and this is just an example, but this is on all of my reports as well. We've got this lovely, lovely export button. So you can use the filter system and you can find any sort of group of animals like we sort of said in the demo um, that you're specifically looking for. Um, and then once you've found that group of animals, you can just hit that export button. And what that does is it pulls it straight into an Excel file for you. You can do whatever you want to do with it and you can easily send it off to whoever you want to send it off to. Fantastic. Um, and just one on the um, being able to, to have um, identify how far along the uh, calf, the cow is in calf um, and then yeah, having an estimated due date there um, in a report. Absolutely. So the way we do that is we go to, so you do this probably on the phone more so, so maybe we'll go onto my phone to quickly, um, sorry about jumping between screens, but it's just the best way to um, see exactly how it works. So you got it there for your reference. So what we can do in that situation is we can go to livestock. So we go to our individual animal management side of Agarab. We can go to start live session in the top left-hand corner, cattle. And then we can go down to pregnancy scan. And then we've got this age assessment mode. And this allows you to age the fetus in weeks, months, whatever, but we just go weeks. And you can connect your hardware here, start session. We're just gonna select one of our animals manually. So we've got this lovely cellars, oh, my stabilizer at the top, sorry. And this is where you can Put that fetal age in there, so how far gone you think it is, and then you can say whether she's pregnant or not as well. Does that answer the question, Anna? Yeah, fantastic. And then there is also a report um, uh, coming out the other side that is then going to be able to to give that estimated due date um, as well. So that's in the in the reports. Um, so uh, we've got quite a few questions. So if everybody is okay, we will run a few minutes over time. Um, but we do um, have one for migrating um, from programs like Shearwell um, or, or other ones. Could you import old da data from this um, for, or from an Excel sheet either as well? Sorry, th this is that report that we were just saying there on the pregnancy scan and estimated due date there. So. Um, 
importing and or exporting from old programs and importing into new and it's super duper easy um as long as we can get it in a csv format and the way our importer um works it is that it just needs to have clear cut columns at the top and it's just a basic csv basically so um you can see how this is in in AgriWeb. um so we've got all of our different sort of vids um tag color breed age class that's exactly what it needs to look like when it comes out of your old um or your current um software platform so as long as it's got those clear cut columns at the top no no gaps in any between any of the um, columns or rows and all you do um, is you just go to add animals import new csv um, and you can just map out from your csv file and what you want where you want it to go into the, what column you want it to go into in agriweb um, so pretty much it would just look, look like this but in an excel csv and then you just import it in it's super easy and we can help you with all that sort of stuff as well um, if you need it more than happy to help absolutely um we have one for seth on the weights um what weight and age a stabilizer heifer is finishing at or it might ed might be able to also um, have, have you killed any yet ed no no not yet not yet well let's watch uh, watch we'll watch your space with bated breath ed but for the uh, for the heifers now interestingly enough as, as I mentioned, we do a lot with data. I was we're pulling that data together today. I was hoping to have it ready for this evening, but uh, it's not quite there. The weight for the heifers averaged uh, 280 to 310, and the age is 16 to 22 months. And that was that's the that's what we saw for um, our slaughter records last year uh, on across the, the herd. Fantastic. Yeah, definitely also keen to, to hear feedback from Ed when he has it. Um, all right, another one for you, Seth, um, just around calving ease, EVVs, and, and how that works with the stabilizer breed. Yeah, so I mean, this is an interesting one. It's, it's, a, it's a measure that we've been doing for 20 years, and we use birth weight, and we use birth weight in conjunction with the calving ease. So every calf that's born uh, in the pedigree herd has the birth weight and the calving ease uh, put together. We, we present an EBV on birth weight. Our current average um, birth weight that we, we see in, uh, we saw last year was 37 kilos. It was 36 for heifers, and it was 38 for bull calves. Um, but in the uh, the index that we use, we've got we've got three different indexes that are available for to help selection of animals. In the uh, both the maternal index, which is uh, called the pound weaning index, and in the pound profit index, the calving ease is built into that to make sure that uh, we're not just selecting for small birth weight, but also that we're selecting for the easy calving as well. I could chip in on. Um calving ease although we haven't actually calved any yet uh, the three farms we went around to select um, our heifers from the attitude of the farmers calving those cattle was, was mega um, uh, very low losses very relaxed about it calving outside um, and just not worried about calving so hopefully that'll be the same in a few weeks time yeah, yeah, you you will be. I can guarantee it, Ed. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, you've got my number, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Josh, one for you um, about where the financial costs uh, per animal come from, and and um, yeah, is that able to link into accountancy packages? Not at the minute. Um, it's definitely something we're going to do into the future. Um, we yeah, definitely into the future. But all those all those sort of um, pricing records come in through when you're you're and you're just creating um, your sale records um, in, in AgriWeb. Um, so we go create records, go into cattle, and we go into sale. So we can just select one animal, just as an example. Maybe we won't. Oh, of course, it's going to come up straight away. <laughs> Um, so what you can do is just set one, one beast and then we'll go down and this is where you can put in, you can put in those, um, per head, um, have you been paid for it for each individual animal? And this is that ad carcass data. And this is where you can put in that information directly from, um, the avatar as a CSV file. So as soon as you're putting this information into this sale record, it's going to put into those performance um, records for you. Um, yes. 
Was yeah, it more absolutely. reference to any of the other costings, like medicines or anything like that? Well, exactly. So they, yeah, any any application, you're able to apply a, uh, a cost um, to, aren't you? So then that's all going to pull through for those cost of production reports. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, and just on that with the, with the integrations, um, yeah, it's absolutely in our... Um, in our roadmap to be able to, to integrate with various, um, yeah, other IOT and, and um, yeah, different sorts of hardware. Um, so in the likes of, of Dan's question there about um, heat products and, and, you know, there's, there's all sorts, you know, the various um, partial meters and everything that's, that's definitely in the picture, uh, just not at the moment. Um, one last question for Seth, and then we will um, wrap up and we will certainly get to everybody's questions. Um, we just will do it after after the event uh, to allow everyone to, to go and have some tea and enjoy their evenings. But um, Seth, what percentage of stabilizer farmers use AI? Now, that's a great question. Um, we, as, as Ed discovered, we've got quite a good uh, range of AI uh, animals out there. This year, we've launched six new AI bulls. We've got two, two new black ones available now, and then we're having uh, three new red bulls launching next week. Uh, they're all available through Cogent. And uh, what we what we find is is of our multipliers, so the, the pedigree breeders that we use, the vast majority of those use AI. Uh, and we're also seeing a big... Um, move towards a lot more commercial herds using it because of the quality of the the bulls that you can use from AI you can uh, you can get you know a fantastic animal on the uh, on the farm without having that need to, to 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 buy and purchase that expensive or perhaps not as expensive as you might think bull um, but yeah we're seeing more and more uh, we see a lot of beef farmers using it I, I don't know the exact numbers but it'd be a very good proportion of them Fantastic. And another one that is actually relevant, very relevant, um, people who do want to find out more about Stabilizer, um, where should they go, Seth? Uh, head over to our website, which is stabilizer.co.uk. All of the information that we've discussed, all of the numbers, all of the figures, everything uh, is on there. All the carbon works on there as well. So uh, yeah, head over to there or pick the phone up, give us a shout and uh, we'd be more than happy to discuss anything with you. Absolutely. All right, everyone. Well, there is some more questions. We will make sure to get to those uh, individually, um, but we will call it there for this evening. Um, thank you to everybody who has joined, uh, to Ed for your uh, personal insight. It's fantastic to, to have you join us, uh, to Seth, and we are very excited to be partnering with the Stabilizer Capital Company. So thank you for your input, Seth. Um, and of course, Josh, thank you for all of your uh, input and insight into AgriWeb. Um, and so, yeah, on that note, uh, we hope that uh, that has been a, a valuable session for everyone. Um, we are really excited to partner with Stabilizer, um, you know, just to be that more efficient and, and help drive um, your cattle forward and, and really yeah, improve that herd performance um, in a more centralized way. Um, so if there are any questions, then do reach out, uh, start a trial with AgriWeb, look on uh, Stabilizer website and um, yeah we'd love to hear from you so on that note have a good night everyone and thank you so much thank you all uh, thank you, Dad. Thank thank you. you